Stepper motors are great to use as generators because they produce high voltages with low speeds of rotation. Most stepper motors are bipolar. They have internally two coils. Each coil produces AC. What we will do is to use a rectifier bridge connected to each of the coils. Each coil will produce a voltage V. We will connect a capacitor at the output of each rectifier bridge. The two outputs can be connected in series in order to get double the voltage or in parallel to obtain the same voltage of each coil but with double the current. Here we have a bipolar stepper motor. We can see that the motor has four wires. How can we know which pair of wires correspond to each of the two coils in the motor. We can see that the motor has a mark that says 8 ohms. This is the resistance of each of the coils in the motor. Therefore, we can use a multimeter to check the resistance between each pair of wires of the motor and in this way identify the two coils in the motor. Let's check the resistance of the wires in the motor. Check first the first two wires and we get around 9 ohms. This means that these two wires correspond to one of the coils in the motor. Therefore, obviously, the second pair will correspond to the other coil. Let's see. We get also 9 ohms. So we have identified the two coils in the motor with this method. If we connect another pair, we don't get any value of resistance. We need to rectify the alternating current that is produced by the coils of the motor. We will take a pair of bridge rectifiers and connect one rectifier to each of the coils in our motor. After each coil is connected to its rectifier, we have added a capacitor to the DC output of the rectifier in order to filter and stabilize the output. We now have two DC outputs from the motor, positive negative, positive negative, and they can be connected in series for more voltage or in parallel for more current. I have connected the two outputs of the motor in parallel, positive with positive and negative with negative, and let's check with the multimeter what voltage can we get. I will make the motor turn by hand and you can see how the voltage starts to rise as the energy is stored in the capacitors. Remember we are moving the motor by hand, that is the speed is low. If you connect the motor to some source of movement you can get larger voltages. Now the two outputs of the motor have been connected in series. Again, I'm going to use the multimeter to check the voltage. I'm going to move the motor by hand again, and we can see that the voltage starts to rise. And we get a higher voltage than with the parallel connection. Let's check our setup with this circuit. We have a string of four LEDs and we have connected the motor in the series connection. There is also a small resistor for the LEDs. Let me now turn the motor and we can see that the LEDs start glowing. There you have it. The LEDs continue to glow even when the motor is not turning because of the energy that has been stored in the capacitors. When the energy of the capacitors is used, the LEDs turn off.